Indian-based tech company has claimed names of 12 crore voters are missing from the voter lists. That means 12 crore Indians will not be able to exercise their rights. Now, this company runs an app called Missing Voters that allows users to check if they are present on voter lists. This issue of missing voters has also been politically, um, you know, charged with her parties often claiming their opponents are ensuring voter blocks go missing. The world over, this is called voter suppression. Now, the founder of the Missing Voters app also claims that a large proportion of these missing voters are Muslims or Dalit. So how big is this issue and what can the Election Commission do? What can individual voters do? To talk about all of this, I'm joined now by Khalid Saifullah, who's founder of the Missing Voters app, Jagdeep Chokar of the Association for Democratic Reform, and we're also speaking with former Chief Election Commissioner T.S. Krishnamurthy. Uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, Mr. Saifullah, let's begin with you explaining how you've come to this huge figure of 12 crore people. Uh, are these people who were on the list and now their names have been deleted or eligible voters who haven't registered themselves? Uh, thank you for inviting me for the show. These are, when I say missing, it's both. These are the voters, those who had voter card and voted in 2014 election and also the people who have not registered. See, the methodology what we used to identify missing voter household is comparison of census data with electoral uh, data. In census, there is a report called household size report that says what is an average household size of each district and how many single person households are present in that district. In India, anywhere you take, the single person household percentage is not more than 5%. So that's one data set. The second data set is the election commission data set, which is in the PDF format. So what we did, we extracted the data from the PDF format by some programming, converted into Excel, and then prepared the similar kind of household size report. Now we compared the household size report of census with the household size report of the electoral data. We found about 10% of households from the electoral data were the single person households. And the way we identify the single person household in electoral list is the electoral list will have the street name, it will have the house number. When we concatenate the street name with house, household number, it will give me a unique household record. Then we identify how many persons, uh, how many similar records are there so that we'll get household size report. Now, to our surprise, we found on average, there were about 10% households with a single person, single voter. Yes. There were, the percentage was more in Muslims. It's easier to identify the names of Muslims. So we made, uh, uh, and we, we found about 17% of Muslim households were single person households. So even if we remove the census, which says 4.3%, minus 17 minus 4.3%, then about 13% of households have a problem. So they may have... Uh, they, may, they, they, may, they may not have been registered, they may have been removed by somebody applying Form 7 on their, beha on, on their behalf, or they are poor people, they have shifted from one house to another house and they didn't know that they need to go and change their address and BLO has removed their name. Okay, no, uh, Mr. 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 One, one minute. We have did in 800 yeah. assembly constituencies. Yes. No, it is, it is a detailed analysis and I've seen some of your material on your site as well. Um, so. My question to you again is, out of these 12 crore odd voters, is there any way of knowing those uh, whose names have been deleted, that is people who could vote in 2014 but now can't in 2019, and those who have for whatever reason chosen not to register themselves? See, the only way we can do it is by doing the physical verification yeah. where we asked a few of the NGOs to come and support us because we are only the people who can write programming and prepare some kind of report on data. We, about in, uh, about in 10 assembly constituencies, we got the NGO support and when we went and we did the door-to-door -door verification, especially in Nagpur, Nagpur South constituencies, we found out of like say uh, 100 households we, uh, uh, we, we surveyed, we found about 30 people, 30 voters who had the physical voter cards, they were voted in 2014 and now their name is not present in the voter list. They are staying in the same location. Uh, we have the voter cards with them. We also have collected the numbers uh, which was already shared with the media people. 
Okay, so out of 100 households, you found 30 uh, whose names were perhaps deleted. Let me bring in Jagdeep Chokar uh, to understand the enormity of this problem. Now, we know that uh, as a routine, the Election Commission undertakes a cleanup of voter lists because people pass away, people move, people then, you know, uh, add their names onto a voter list in a new locality. Uh, is this an unusual number uh, that uh, Khalid says he's found through his app? Well, it certainly looks like an unusual number, and uh, there were similar reports from Karnataka where a sizable number of voters were missing from the electoral rolls, and when then the election commission did a special drive and they re-enrolled some uh, a large number of voters. The the fact is that the electoral roll is a very complex, massive phenomenon. To have it 100% uh, correct all the time, in my opinion, is not actually possible. But the kind of things that seem to have been detected in the survey uh, are, are disturbing. And it seems that there are significant proportions of uh, possible voters whose names are missing from the electoral rolls wherever they were, they were there earlier. Now, the, this thing can only be done by the Election Commission to undertake, as has been suggested, physical verification. There was another phenomenon that happened a couple of years ago when the Election Commission tried to link uh, electoral roll data with the Aadhaar number of uh, voters. And a large number of voters were, uh, sort of this linkage was done. And then the Supreme Court put a stop to it and the Election Commission also tried to put a stop to it. But a massive number of people had been enrolled and there were some mistakes apparently there also. And a lot of people got uh, their names deleted. Now these issues are rather complex for, for common people to understand. But I think the Election Commission has not been aggressive or outgoing enough to uh, actual do physical verifications and let their results be known publicly. Uh, election Commission needs to be more uh, outgoing, more active and more transparent in letting people know what has been the results of this kind of verifications. First of all, they have to do verifications and then come out with the results. Uh, there is significant amount of information which seems to show that there possibly is some systematic uh, activity going on. Although there is, at least as far as I'm concerned, there's no proper proof. Mm. But to actually even rule it out, the Election Commission has to do more than it has done so far. Okay, so like like I said in the beginning of the show, this has also become uh, an issue of uh, you know political accusations. Uh, J the JDS uh, has claimed that 40 lakh names are missing in uh, Maharashtra, based uh, on uh, the data that Khalid Saifullah has found uh, in Andhra Pradesh. You will remember Chandra Babu Naidu claimed 8 lakh people were missing from the voter list, and he blamed his uh, political opponent, the YSR Congress, uh, for this. Uh, the EC then came out with its own list where they said only about 1.4 lakh um, names had been deleted. In Telangana, there was a huge issue in the recently concluded um, assembly polls, uh, which brings me back to the question, Khalid, that if there are people who do not want to vote, it is a different matter because there is no compulsory voting in India. Uh, if there are people who want to vote and whose names have been removed, uh, and if it is, as you were suggesting, you, you say that uh, 3 crore of these 12 crore are Muslims and 4 crore are Dalits, um, which seems to indicate that there is a reason that they don't make it to the list. That is a different kind of an issue altogether. What have you found through all of your research and through your data and what are the reasons for these people's names not being on the list? See, there are two reasons. One reason is, uh, at some places, the people—they are the people whom they call them, who they call themselves as an uh, panna pramuk. They want to make their boot mazboot. So my question is, when you say they have to, they want to make their boot mazboot, are they removing the people who are not voting to their political party? No, but how so, can they? Uh, applying how can they? Is easy. How can Anybody they remove? Can go and apply on the name. 
Yeah, how can they remove? And and also, Khalid, you're making a political see, accusation uh, form here. 20, so. Form 20, uh, online? Yes, see, uh, I can go, uh, Form 20 is a twen uh, form which says in each, uh, in each polling booth which political party got how many votes. Now, a person can see at a political level that this particular booth is not favorable to my party and they can see the electoral list and apply Form 7 online on the names of a uh, few people. Actually, it should happen that the people, the booth level officer should go physically verify and then either remove the person if the claim has been made is correct or not. But we all know that uh, the booth level officers are not the direct employees of election commission. They do not have control and there is no proper workflow mechanism which will keep a track of things. We have seen that the names get missing and the person is still under assumption that because he has a physical voter card, he can go and vote. On the day of election, they'll find out that they, their vote has been removed. That's one reason. Reason two is, as, as we all know, uh, Muslims and Dalits are economically backward. About 42% of Muslims are illiterate as per the census, and the same percentage are illiterate in Dalits. So uh, because of their economical background, they don't stay in the same location for more than four years. They, they move to the other street. So when the normal elect enrollment uh, verification happens, the booth level officer may find out that the people are not staying there and can remove the votes. So there may be, these are the main two reasons I have identified why the votes are missing. But my main concern is how can we get them back into the system? Only election commission can't do it. The civil society people, yes. individuals, no, everyone and, and we'll should take mm. a part on it. They should take the responsibility of their booth mm. and do it. Yes, no, we'll come to that. We'll come to that uh, and with the question with what individuals can do. But before that, how does the election commission deal with this? And I have Mr. T S Krishnamurthy on the line with us. Thank you for joining the conversation, sir. Uh, okay. To catch you up to speed, there is data that uh, claims 12 crore, over 12 crore names are missing from voter lists. Three crore of these are Muslims. Four crore are Dalit. Um, the uh, insinuation seems to be that uh, there is some element of voter suppression because of filing of Form 7s. Um, have you seen this trend uh, over the years uh, with different political yeah. parties? No, unfortunately, I have not been able to go through the details of that. I'll, all that I could say is I don't know who has made this complaint that 12 crores of names are missing and in which state is that? See, generally, we have a system once in five years door-to-door -door verification is made. Thereafter, we have a system by which every individual voter can re uh, make a request with his form number six, I think it is, they fill it up with a necessary proof of citizenship and it is automatically given. But it takes time. Now they have introduced online registration and in Madras, for example, I have come across people who have got the name included within a week's time. And I don't know in which place uh, 12 crores of voters are missing. It's a very matter of very serious concern, but whether it is genuine or not is a thing to be verified first. Because it's very easy to make an allegation that yeah. so many names are missing. You have to find out. For example, when I was the chief election commissioner, there was a case when a leading uh, person, a person uh, in Bombay claimed that her name was not there. But when we found out, we had sent letters to her. The house was locked. Nobody replied. But people, letters were unreplied. Uh, and the name was removed. So there are set procedures, but I am equally surprised 12 crores of names are missing. It's very difficult for me unless yeah. and until I am uh, I have a necessary proof that there's so many names have been missing. So, so Mr. Krishnamurthy, if, if you would uh, just listen in, the, the person who's made that claim is on the show right now, and uh, mm -hmm. he's been explaining his uh, process. And I think you've heard some of the questions that uh, Mr. Krishnamurthy has raised, Khalid. Uh, specifically, how many people from which state? So we have analyzed about 800 assembly constituencies pan India. We have selected about uh, 150 from Uttar Pradesh and in Bihar the percentage is very low. Uh, sir, the methodology I have al already explained, I compare the census household report data and I, I prepare the similar report with the electoral data. So I found that single person households as per census, census says it's 4.3%. But when we build a similar report with the electoral data, by data mining it, we find about 10% households have only one voter. And about 17% of uh, Muslim households have only one voter. 
So the uh, the calculation was made by subtracting the 17 percent of uh, one voter minus the four percent. That is, in 13 percent of households, Muslim households, they should be at least one valid voter whose name is not present in the voter list. So we 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 again went back to the census and we found how many Muslim Dalit households are there and how many Dalit households are there. And accordingly, we said, okay, these many 13 percent of the households. Uh, have uh, uh, there's only one voter. If at least one more voter is added into the system, that figure comes to three crore. So that's the theoretical analysis done by data mining the electoral rolls. And we have asked NGOs to support us so that we can do the ground verification. We were successful. Few NGOs came forward in Nagpur, uh, Nander, Lucknow, and there when we compared the data, we found that our data, what we have, uh, what what we made by uh, data mining the electoral rolls, matches with the on-ground survey. Okay, so uh, of course, Mr. Krishnamurthy, uh, verifying all 12 crore names would be a mammoth task, which uh, uh, maybe the election commission wouldn't want to do because they would ask, why should we take this at, as face value the same way you have? How crucial is this as an issue and why do you think this happens when people's names go missing off the voter list? We usually see anecdotal uh, you know, instances every election and then uh, political accusations. But why does this happen? No, and uh, see, I, first of all, I would like to know whether this information was shared with the election commission or not, mm -hmm. because normally when such complaints are received, we do make a at least a limited uh, verification to find out the authenticity of the claim made. Now, it is quite likely that in some places we do not have. But what we do generally is take the population in each district, and the general rule is about 60 to 70 percent of the population in each district is about 18 years age. So we try to verify and if the total number of voters in each constituency approximately reaches 60 to 70 percent, we feel genuinely that there, is, there may be omissions, but may not be a major omission as 12 crores and so on. So I would certainly uh, be concerned if 12 crores of voters are missing in the name. And I think they should share this information with the Election Commission. I do agree the Election Commission may not be able to do 100% verification before the elections. But they can certainly do some test checking in big cities and ask them to verify individually mm -hmm. whether the claim made is genuine or not. Because it is very difficult to believe that one household person has only one name. It is, I don't know, um, it may be correct, I'm not questioning the veracity of the claim made, but the point is, uh, so many opportunities are given to the voters to register the names. The political parties themselves, they send the names and we verify them and include them. So uh, I, what I will say is only election commission at least should make uh, immediately some percentage of checks, at least in big cities, how this mistake has happened. Okay, uh, Mr. Chokar, uh, please come in uh, on the conversation we've heard I have so a far. Submission here, if you permit. Just, just one minute, Khalid. Let, let Mr. Chokar come in uh, sir, because I have one submission here to the sir. Just, just, just one second. Just one second. Let Mr. Chokar come in. Yes, sir. You see, the there is not only what uh, Mr. Safiullah has done. There are also other reports of this kind that seems to have happened. And uh, the fact that uh, there have been instances of uh, people's name missing from voters list when they go to the polling booth uh, are not unheard of. Now, whether it is 12 crores or 8 crores doesn't make a difference. I would say even if it is one person, it is, it is worth thinking about. And uh, I would repeat uh, only to say that election commission has to be more proactive to do this. Along with this, there is a related issue that if somebody's name is found missing from the electoral roll and the person has the uh, voter identity card, which is registration number, etc., then he or she is required to fill up Form 6, which is meant for a new registration. And the Form 6 has a uh, statement which has to be certified that I do not have a voter registration card or I am not registered anywhere. Now, unless a person does this, Form 6 is not accepted. But a person whose name was there on the voter list that is being deleted cannot in all honesty make this statement. And if he or she makes it, 
he or she is guilty of perjury because below that the there is also a note saying that if any information given in this form is uh, incorrect one is liable to criminal prosecution so that process of re-registering people whose names have somehow disappeared from the voter list needs to be refined, improved, and made different from brand new voter registration. You know, that's why I said that the electoral role, the whole process is very complex. Uh, we should be willing to accept a certain degree of uh, omission and commission, but uh, 30 percent and uh, 12 crores are huge numbers and uh, I am uh, aware of this fact that uh, Mr. Krishnamurti said that it is difficult to accept a single person uh, household in the voters list. I believe that a large number of single person households have been found in the voters list and that is what raises the concern that Maybe there is something which is going on which is not known to people at large. And it, I think the Election Commission is duty-bound to, to uh, deal with this situation urgently and transparently. Yeah, uh, Khaled, you wanted to come in with a point. Yeah, see, uh, as we all know, the, the, the efforts that Election Commissions are doing are really appreciated, but that's not sufficient. Uh, they give paper ads, they say, they, they give, uh, the election commission will send the booth level officer only to the polling booth, not to the doorstep of the, of the individuals. See, 42% of Muslims are illiterate. Only 7% of the Muslims have passed 10th class. So they don't read the papers, they don't know that they have to go and get it enrolled. When we get the electricity bill, the person will come with a machine, to see our the meter reading and give the electric, electricity bill to us. Why can't the election commission do at least one in a year? Why can't the polling booth agent, agent uh, polling booth officer visit the households in the app, check how many are the valid voters and then identify who are missing and fill the form there itself. When this process uh, is, is, is when, when we start this kind of process, only then we can yeah. achieve the election commission's mission, no voter left behind. Okay, that's an interesting point. I mean, I don't know how practical it is uh, with the, the kind of staffing the election commission has and the you know vast sample size of voters. Mr. Krishnamurti, would you like to come in on the comments no, the made? See, the position the varies from state to state. In the some of the states, the, the, the enumeration is... One minute, 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 Khaled. One minute, one minute, Khaled. Let Mr. Krishnamurti finish. Yes, Mr. Krishnamurti. See, the position varies from state to state. In most of the states where the administration is good or the enumerators are absolutely you know duty-bound, they they do enumerate reasonably well, but there are some states where it, the mistakes can happen. But what is intriguing me is that if 12 crores of people have not been um, entered in the voters register, what were they doing till now? Then the second question is the household, only one person. There are a lot of migrant voters, they get registered, for example, students, they get registered in the place where they study, they may uh, not have their name in the place where they live, but it may be included in the household. But I do agree a, a thorough inquiry has to be done and to satisfy ourselves that no voter's name is unnecessarily missed. You know, there are uh, so many layers to this uh, issue as well. The reports that there are it fewer first-time no, voters. Thorough, it yes. requires a very thorough study and I'm sure the election commission, if it is um, brought to his notice, it will certainly uh, do the needful and uh, I don't mind supporting the view that, that it needs to be inquired into and satisfy, to satisfy the people, uh, this one, uh, expectations. Yes. Uh, Khaled, have uh, you informed the election commission of your findings? No, not after the Karnataka, uh, when we identified in Karnataka that 18 lakh Muslim households were missing and then we launched an app. Uh, mm -hmm. The app was downloaded by many volunteers. Uh, they visited each and every household and voters came back. After that, uh, after that episode, we got an opportunity to uh, to talk to the Sri O.P. Rawat Sahab, the ex-chief election commissioner, and then explain the work. And uh, he's, he appreciated the work that we are doing to fulfill the No Water Left Behind mission. In, in Maharashtra, on the day of the, of the press conference, I, I went to uh, the chief election co commission office and then submitted uh, my findings. My, my uh, uh, the only concern I have is this is the theoretical, uh, dip on, after data mining the electoral rolls, this is what I have found. Can election commission also use the similar process to find the single person households and send somebody to that person and get it filled? 
Okay, I'm not sure how much time there is, but so for the question, yes, we have informed the election yes. commission what we are doing. Okay, so I'm not sure how much time there is, but of course, the the key to all of this is that uh, every aware voter can do something for themselves. Uh, uh, there is, of course, Khalid's app, the missing voters app. There are other ways. The election commission has made it easier to go online and check, uh, and uh, that's at the end of the day the most responsible thing that any citizen eligible for voting can do. Thank you so much to all of you for joining us in this conversation today.